Hi guys, this is um, the first unit video for your end of course test review. So I am making a video, um, actually probably more than one video for each unit. I have a time um, restraint that I have to work with for each video. So some units are going to have um, multiple videos in order for me to get through all the material. But you're going to get a sheet like this that we're going to work through on the video. And then once you've completed the videos for the unit, you'll pick up um, a practice sheet for you to do on your own. All right, so starting off, unit one, um, first thing we did was just go through some vocabulary um, that you may have already known. Um, in the first um, unit, we were talking about polynomials. So we were talking about the number of terms in a polynomial. Um, we talked about coefficients and constants. So for our first example, how many terms are in the expression? When we look for terms, they are going to be separated by addition and subtraction. So when I look and see that there are three addition or subtraction signs, that tells me then that there are four terms in this polynomial. All right, number two, what are the coefficients and constants? So coefficients, that's the number that is in front of the variable. It's multiplied to the variable, and it comes in handy when we go to combine like terms. But our coefficients for this problem, so I'm just going to abbreviate that there, are 20 and negative 11. And then constants are the terms or really it should just be a term in your polynomial that doesn't have a variable. That's why it's constant, because it's not going to vary. So in this problem, our constant is a positive 3. All right, next up we're going to work with the operation. So adding, subtra subtracting, multiplying, and dividing. So first up, basically all we're going to do when we add and subtract is combine like terms. So for example number 3, I'm going to look at this binomial is being added to this binomial, so I'm going to search for like terms, and those two right there are like terms, and those two right there are like terms, so now I'm just going to add them together, so 2x plus 8x would be 10x, and then a negative 6 plus a positive 12 would be a positive 6. And then that is the solution because 10x and 6 are not like terms. All right, number four. This time we're subtracting these two binomials. So what you need to remember on subtracting is that we need to distribute this negative. We don't want to subtract just the 7x. We want to subtract this whole thing. So we want to subtract the 7x and subtract the negative 4. But again, we're going to look for like terms. So the 3x and the 7x are like terms. The negative 13 and the negative 4 are like terms. So now 3x minus 7x is going to be negative 4x. And negative 13 minus negative 4 would be negative 13 plus 4, which would be minus 9. And then again, those are not like terms, so we're done with that. All right, when we multiply, we learn the acronym FOIL, and that is useful to make sure that we get everything multiplied to the other terms. So what it tells us to do is to multiply the first terms in each binomial together. So that would give us 10x squared. Then we can multiply the outside, that's the O, and get a positive 18x. Then we can do the inside terms together, and that would give us a negative 35x. And then we can multiply the last terms, that's what the L is, for a negative 63. And then most of the time, our two middle terms can be combined together. And in this case, that's right there. Those are like terms, so we can combine them together. So our final simplified answer would be 
10x squared minus 17x minus 63. All right, number six. This time we are multiplying a binomial to a trinomial. So FOIL doesn't exactly work because we have more than four terms. So what we want to remember is that this is just distributive property. Whoops, skipped over that. So what we want to do is first, I am going to distribute the 3x to this trinomial right there. All right, so when I do that, I'm going to get a 6x cubed minus 9x squared minus 24x. So that was the result of distributing the 3x to the trinomial. Now I need to distribute my constant term to the trinomial, which is just a 1. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to line up my like terms to make it easier to combine in the next step. So I multiply this by 1, I get 2x squared minus 3x, and then 1 times negative 8 is negative 8. So now for the final simplified answer, I'm going to combine my like terms together. So our answer is 6x cubed minus 7x squared minus 27x minus 8. All right, excellent. Okay, moving on. Now we're going to look at unit conversions and dimensional analysis. And I know a lot of you did not like this when we were in the unit, but as with most things, when you go back and look at them, you don't really see what was so difficult. So all we're really doing is converting from one unit to the next, and we use dimensional analysis. It basically is just the technique that says that we're going to multiply by a fraction that's equivalent to 1, and we can multiply by 1 as many times as we want. But what we're going to do is multiply by a fraction that is going to be equal to 1, but it's also going to end up changing our units for us. So some of this is given to you. Some of it you should just know. So it just depends on the question. All right, first up, we want to change 6 liters into quarts. So I'm going to start off with 6 liters. All right, now we need to multiply by a fraction that is going to cancel the liters away. So our, whenever we cancel, our values have to be diagonal. So the liters are going to have to be diagonal from each other. And I want to eventually get to quarts. I gave you a conversion right here that 1 liter is 1.05 quarts. So now the liters will cancel, and the unit I'm left with is quarts, which is what I wanted. So all we need to do is multiply straight across. So we have 6.30 or 6.3 quarts. All right, next one. A bowl of cereal weighs 60 ounces. How much is this in kilograms? So we're going to start with 60 ounces. And we need to change this into kilograms. Now, if you want to, you can put this over, whoops, over a 1 if that helps you because we don't have a denominator, so it would just be 1. All right, but we need to multiply by a fraction that will cancel the ounces away. All right, well, let's go over and look at our conversions. Um, we need to go to, from ounces to kilograms. We don't have a direct conversion for that, but we can change ounces into pounds and then pounds into kilograms. So this one's going to require two steps, which happens sometimes, and not a big deal. So 60 ounces, I need to write a fraction that is equal to 1 that will cancel the ounces away. And from our um, list on the left, we know that 16 ounces is 1 pound. So now the ounces are gone. But now our unit is in pounds, and we want kilograms. So I need to multiply by a fraction that will cancel the pounds away. And we have a pound to kilogram conversion. So I know that one pound is 0.454 kilograms. 
So now we can cancel the pounds and the unit we're left with is kilograms, which is what we were asked for. So at this point, we would just grab a calculator and then go through. We need to multiply 60 times 1 times 0.454, and then we need to divide that by 16. And I got 1.7025. Kilograms. All right, next up, number nine, we're going to convert kilometers to inches. All right, so I gave you this information um, kilometers in a mile, and one mile is 5,280 feet. And then we might have to use some conversions that we know ourselves. All right, so first to start off with, and this isn't a ton of space, I'm going to scoot over here a little bit. Um, 12 kilometers. All right, we can put that over one if you want. All right, we need to multiply by a fraction that's equivalent to one that will cancel away our kilometers. And we can see right here that there are 16 kilometers in one mile. So now the kilometers can cancel away. All right, we're in miles, but we want inches. So we need a fraction that is equivalent to one that will cancel miles away. And we know that one mile is 5,280 feet. So now our miles are canceled, and the unit we're left with is feet. We want inches. So now we need to multiply by a fraction that's equivalent to one that will cancel away the feet. All right, so we know that one foot has 12 inches, so now the feet will cancel. The unit we're left with is inches, which is what we wanted. So this is where, again, we'll grab the calculator. We need to multiply 12 times 1 times 5,280 times 12, and then that needs to be divided by 16. So I got... 47,520 inches. All right, next up. This one, we are traveling in a car at 65 miles per hour, so how many feet per second? So in this problem, we're actually starting with two units. We have miles and hours, and we're changing into feet and seconds. So we really have two conversions that we need to do. So I'm going to start off over here. We're driving 65 miles in one hour. All right, I'm going to get rid of the miles first. I want to change it to feet. So I need to multiply by a fraction that's equivalent to one that will cancel out the miles. I'm trying to get feet. And we know one mile is 5,280 feet. All right, so now the miles are gone. All right, now we need to multiply by a fraction. Oh, wait, no, we're done. We're done with the feet. Sorry. Ah, forget that. Ah, pretend you don't see that. All right, so we have feet, which is what we want. Now we have to get into seconds, and we're in hours. So this time the hours need to go up here because in order to cancel, it needs to be diagonal. So we want to get into seconds. So we know that one hour has 60 minutes. How's that? Pretty good. So now the hours are gone. We're in minutes, but we want seconds. And we know that one minute 